Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's talk about dreams. The dream world is an interesting topic for me. I've always had vivid dreams, active dreams, not always good dreams. A lot of times I'll dream nightmares, anxiety inducing dreams. I'll wake up in a cold sweat, panicking and kind of just out of my mind, triggered as fuck. I'll have to figure out how to calm myself down. That's not always that fun. But I think I dream every night. Every once in a while, I like to talk about dreams. Every once in a while, I'll meet somebody that tells me that they don't dream at all. I mean, they do, they just don't remember it. You have to dream or else you go crazy. You have to hit REM sleep, that rapid eye movement sleep. But I like to remember my dreams. I don't like to remember the nightmares, but you know, there's a lot of information that you can be passed that can that can be passed along to you in that dream state. I believe that there is a connection between the universe, between what's going on existentially outside of your head and inside of you. That there's when you're in your dream state. We don't feel so trapped inside our bodies. When we're awake, we're like a little person sitting behind in our head behind a movie screen, watching out these eyes, like, like they're windows at, at the world, you know? It's like we're, we're trapped inside this shell, witnessing the world as it happens, interacting with it. But when you're dreaming, it's a more expansive state. There's no boundaries. The only boundary is your imagination. You know, you can really uh, have some fun with it if you learn how to lucid dream to take control of your dreams. I've been able to do this, not on command, but I've been able to do it many times throughout the course of my life. And it's rather fun when you notice when you're still dreaming, you're still in REM sleep, all the pictures and sounds and sights and all the stuff of your dream world is still going on. But you still, but you realize that you're dreaming. This is just a dream. And that you, you, the next step with that is to be able to call forth anything you want. You can control that dream. That's really fun when that happens. I wish I could do that on command every time. But in some ways, it would be, I guess it would get boring. Some of the fun part of dreaming is the out of control, spontaneous aspect of it. It's kind of similar to life. If you, if you were in control of life, like if you were a wizard or a god, life would be boring. The spontaneity of it makes it interesting. You don't really know what's gonna happen. But I think it's important to just pay attention to the content of your dreams, to the messages that are delivered to you. Like when, when you're talking to people in your dream, what kind of stuff are they saying? Who are you dreaming about? What are you dreaming about? I think it's a, it's a worthwhile exercise and meditation when you first wake up to take a few minutes and just think about what you were dreaming. Now, if you're having extreme nightmares and you wake up freaked out, ready to go grab your gun, because <laughs> you're triggered and your PTSD bells are going off, sirens are going off, you're in battle mode, then, you know, you want to be able to snap out of that state rather quickly so it, you don't hurt yourself or hurt others or you know, do something stupid. At least just have a bad day. You want to be able to have a good day and be productive. You don't want your dreams to rule your, your waking hours. People ask me often, you know, why did you move to Florida? Because I loved L.A. I wasn't running from anything from L.A. I wasn't running from the politics. I wasn't frustrated with who the governor was or who the mayor was or any of that shit, liberal or conservative politics. I didn't care. It had nothing to do with me. My motorcycle shop was blowing up. We were just starting to do well. And all of a sudden, I had this fucking hair up my butt that I gotta move to Florida. Came out of nowhere. People out in LA were kind of surprised. People that, like my business partner, was downright angry at me. I had to convince him to move to Florida. And that took, that took some 
a few sales pitches. He wasn't really interested in doing it. Here, I'm going to break the shop up. We're just getting popular and I'm going to break up the shop and move to Florida. What the fuck's wrong with you? I told him, no, we can keep the shop going. We can move to Florida and be more successful. And that is what happened. But what got me here, it wasn't the market research that I did on Daytona Beach area of being motorcycle mecca. It wasn't the fact that Florida had a year-round riding uh, season with access to the East Coast where a lot of people from different states on the East Coast come down here. And there's different economies, so if the economy in Florida isn't always great, well, it may be great in New York, and they got plenty of money, and fucking just anybody who lives down in Florida knows that there's a shitload of New Yorkers down here. <laughs> Canadians, too. So there was a lot of different positive aspects to it, but none of that was what really what drove me here. What drove me here was my dreams. I was dreaming about Florida every night for, geez, about a year. I don't know why. Why Florida? Uh, who the fuck knows? I didn't have any friends here. I didn't have any family here. I had no connection to Florida. I'd been here once in 1980 when they opened up Epcot Center when I was like 10 years old. That's my only experience with Florida. It was the dreams. I was dreaming about it. Just this weird shit. I'd wake up in the, in the, the day, morning, and go have my regular work day and socialize with my friends and do my thing. And just in the back of my mind would be these goddamn dreams that I was having at night. Just random shit about the state of Florida, about being in Florida. Finally dawned on me one day, I gotta move to fucking Florida. And I mean, it happens. When I made that decision, it happened so quick. And within a couple months of when I got here, the shop was up and running. I was getting in magazines. I was starting multiple businesses. I mean, businesses were just, I mean, it was just happening. I can't even say, I wasn't planning on any of it. Next thing you know, I had a, pro a promotion company. I'm promoting bands all over town within a few months of being here. I'm like, well, how, how did this happen? I'm, pr I'm promoting fucking heavy metal bands all over Central Florida. This was never even a plan. This just somehow happened. You know, we were doing all kinds of shit. I started a retail store, clothing store. Never had plans of doing that shit. I never had a retail job in my life. I didn't know anything about that shit. It was all just because of those dreams. I was just paying attention to those dreams and I finally realized I gotta do something. You can get a lot of information in your dreams. I believe that there's a connection to the universe. Maybe it's to God, I don't know what it is. But I pay attention to that shit. I had a weird kind of creepy experience with it kind of reinforce this idea in my head that there was something really to the dream world. It's not just a, a, a garbage dump of things that we see and go through and, and remember during the week and that we dream about. Sometimes it's that. But there's more to it. I mean, tell me what you think in the comments, but I, I'll tell you this last little story real quick before I end the video. It was bike week. Probably about Geez, five years ago, maybe a little more, less than 10 years ago. Bike Week's real big. If you don't know about Daytona Bike Week, we get 500,000, 800,000 bikers from all over the country in this little tiny little beach town. Normally this town's dead and nothing going on, but during Bike Week, it's popping. It's crazy. We have a few events like that, but Bike Week is, is huge. We're up on Main Street, me and my business partner, and we're at uh, Dirty Harry's, one of the bars up there, sitting in a little outside seating, just watching this shit go by. There's plenty of chicks, there's plenty of choppers. It's, you know, it's, it's that kind of scene. I pass out a lot of business cards. I load up stickers with all the little beer tub girls. So they have stickers they can pass out for me. I use it as a chance to do a little bit of guerrilla marketing. And I'm sitting there at the bar at Dirty Harry's with my buddy Jason and I tell him, 
about the dream that I had last night. And I said, you know, remember Richie Mott? It was a former friend of ours, Philadelphia Mafia guy, made guy. Richie was the shit. And not everybody liked Richie. I liked Richie. He never did anything wrong with me. He, he burned his bridges with other people. But, uh, but I liked Richie. Richie was cool. And I hadn't seen him in a while. You know, people drift apart. You do your own thing. Everybody's busy with their little businesses and their hustle and all that. I hadn't seen Richie in, fuck, six months. It had been a while. And I told him about the dream that I had. And I said, you know, I had this weird dream about Richie last night. And it was that uh, Richie was dead. He, he had died. And he came to me in my dream as an angel. Just like you would think about. Wings and all. Fucking halo and all. You know, it's a dream. And he came to me and he said, you know what, man? We sat down and we talked. And he said, I want to thank you. I, I wanted to thank you in particular. Because you were always right on with me. You were always a true blue brother. You were always right by my side. You always liked me. Accepted me. You're always cool as shit. And he was just like, I thank you for that. And we shook hands, gave a little bro hug. And he flapped his little angel wings off and took off. <laughs> Silly ass dream. I'm sitting here at Dirty Harry's during bike week telling Jason this dream. The only people up at the bar was this chick, this fat chick. I didn't, I didn't think I knew her. She looked up from her drink and she said, I know Richie. I looked at her and I realized I recognized her that I had met her once before. And it was this chick that Richie was dating, but she had gained a lot of weight. But one of the times me and her, me and Richie hung out, she was with him. And I have a good memory for faces. And I was just like, oh man, I haven't seen you in a while. And she was just like, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Richie Mott. Richie Mott died last night of heart failure in the hospital. He's dead. And I was like, he died when? And she was like, last night. And I was like, well, I had that dream last night. And she was just like, that was Richie, that was real. And I fucking cold, my fucking hair stood up on my arm. And I was just like, whoa, that's creepy. That's weird. What's the coincidence of that shit, right? I mean, I had this dream about Richie being a fucking angel. I didn't know he died. That was not information I knew. She told me that. And he came to me in my dream and had that conversation. I'll never forget that dream as long as I live. Pay attention to your dreams. Thanks for watching.